In this video, I chat with one of the creators of Cult of the Lamb, my buddy Jim, and he explains step by step exactly how to make a 2D game in Unity, and more importantly, if you stick around to the end, you're going to learn exactly how to make your 2D art breathtakingly gorgeous. Let's talk about tools really quick. So let's just really quick list off the tools you use for the artwork. Yeah, uh, super simple really. We just draw everything in Photoshop, import it into Unity, job done. For the animation, I use Spine, which is really good. But yeah, beyond that, there's not really much else. It's all... What about an Illustrator? Haven't used Illustrator for anything, mate. <laughs> me neither. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't like using it. It's so clunky for me. Um, it's heavy. I mean, I, I always come from that that flash flash game background which is vector based mm -hmm. um so this was actually yeah. the first game we ever did that used photoshop so, and it was uh quite the learning experience going from mm -hmm. doing everything in flash to, to photoshop but there's another thing that we kind of noticed looking at a lot of um other games was like having that kind of more textured feel mm -hmm. that you, you you can only really get from bitmap is is gives a kind of sense of uh, i don't know what it is it's a sort of sense of depth and grit and almost authenticity and it might just be like a what what's currently popular thing but that was kind of definitely a conscious decision as well was to try and keep the cartoon bright colorful style but also add that layer in the the darkness and the and the grit and slightly rough edges to the lines and stuff so okay. yeah it was it was definitely a big learning process moving from that but then we were like yeah it's there's no vector it's all it's all uh all Photoshop. Well, what about hardware? Are we using a mouse? Are we using a Wacom pen tablet? Yeah, I got a Wacom, which is great. And just, uh, I started out on a Mac MacBook, um, and the, the Photoshop files just got bigger and bigger, and the MacBook kind of struggled <laughs> more and more, and uh, Julian persuaded me to, to get a decent PC, and it was... Um, yep. It was amazing, to be honest. Like it's amazing to having the, the, <laughs> the scratch discs not running out and just uh, you know I, know. I think once you're working with big files, it really slows you down eventually. You could buy a Mac that that runs great, but it would be five grand. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> that's true. I'm gonna frame this question so that you can you can hopefully give us like the most effective answer. I could say, how did you do it? Like how how are you, how are you creating art? But what I'm gonna frame the question is, is a little bit more precise, which is if you were to tell your, let's say your 18 year old self, here's how you're gonna do artwork from start to finish for this multi-million dollar explosive viral game. What is that process like from start to finish? That means from ideation to pen and paper, to Photoshop, to Unity, what's the process look like? From like from a creative point of view, or um... yeah, the the creative side, but primarily the technical side. Like if you were to teach this, and and people wanted to learn how you did what you did with the artwork, what's it look like? Um, that's tricky. I think just 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 practice lots, right? Uh, and and learn how to use the tools as well. And I'm I'm still I'm very stuck in my ways about not learning new techniques and stuff. So I think it's just like <laughs> I really I really am, and it and it's bad, but I, I think you know it's really important to be to not be afraid of learning new techniques and because even like going from flash to photoshop i was really stubborn about it and i didn't like it and it took me a long while to get used to it but you know, i think ultimately it was it was for the best so i think it's just really important yeah and this is a you know this is advice for myself right now as well is, is don't be afraid of you know learning and, and pushing yourself to try new things and techniques because in the long run you're right. probably going to save yourself a lot of time let's let's figure out like the, the the line okay so starting from point a to point b a lot of times we're just on autopilot yeah. And it's like, what? You just draw a character and learn how to draw a character. So uh, maybe I'll ask it a different way. Does it start on a piece of paper? Does, it, for example, a character, does it start as a sketch? I don't do too much drawing on paper. I find it kind of quicker. Um, and I'm just so used to drawing on a, on a computer. And but, yeah. But yeah, I think it's kind of with, yeah, how do you start out with drawing a character, designing it? I think it's figuring out what the character's personality is and what are the goals that you want the character to be. So, so for, for, for Cult of the Lamb, we wanted the lamb to to feel really iconic and simple, but also, you know, complicated enough that it was it felt interesting. And that, that kind of involved lots of tweaking and copy and pasting the same design, but changing the size of the eyes slightly or changing the, the style of the ears or and just kind of really going through iteration and, 
I mean, I'd love to say you just kind of sit and sketch it a few times and then you're like, that's the perfect character, but it's really been a kind of uh, a mm -hmm. case of iterating and just tiny changes until you kind of figure out the what works best through just changing things and, and kind of going through many, many different versions. And maybe that's not the kind of the most cr kind of creative no, yeah. auteur way. Like you love to think that um, true artists just create things out of thin air, but that, for us, that's definitely been the, <laughs> the process, you know, drawing yeah. lots of things, picking bits that you kind of like from one and others and kind of putting them together and then redrawing it and redrawing it. And eventually you kind of get to something you're like, okay, this is, this is the one. And so that's all done in Photoshop. You just open up Photoshop. Is it a 4k document for, let's say a character, for example. So would you just start with a 4k document or would you start really rough? Super duper rough. Yeah. Just like super lines and kind of, cause I think you kind of want the, you know, it's important that the silhouette's strong. Um, and the, the, the main features are like the defining features are kind of figured out first. And then once you have, and you can do that just with very simple, thick, basic lines it yep. doesn't have to like look too good it's just like figure, figuring out what the yeah the silhouette and the defining features of that character are and then once you have that you can go in and do more details and kind of tweak the different mm -hmm. features and try out different ideas for them um until you're kind of iterating it and then once you're like okay this is the design and it's still kind of rough but i've kind of copy and pasted the horns from this one onto this one and then i'm like okay this looks good and then you kind of actually draw it for real kind of thing once you the design is is decided it's um you actually do the, the final one and that's when you try and like really caring about making every line perfect and until that point exactly you don't need to worry too much about that so it's kind of like a logo it's kind of like logo design yeah totally tell me more about the silhouette what do you mean by silhouette is strong what does that mean so i think there's this principle that you that a good character has like a really you can tell which what the character is just by looking at his silhouette so if you kind of take um homer simpson or marge simpson and just fill it in full black and all you can see is the, the shadow of it the silhouette uh you can still recognize what the character is and it has a very clean well-defined silhouette um mm -hmm. and that just really helps with just making a character recognizable and iconic um because sometimes you have you know i'm drawing a character and i'm like okay i want it to have huge horns and i want it to have these kind of i don't know big eyebrows and ears or whatever but if they're kind of overlapping and it kind of makes a bit of a mess it doesn't work and it doesn't it looks a bit yeah. messy and you're like okay well i wanted it to have these big horns but if i shrink the horns a little bit and it kind of stops it overlapping from the ears or whatever then that kind of the overall uh design is is a lot stronger and more easy right. for for the viewer to kind of just decipher at a glance and just i don't know it's a kind of funny thing yeah. that you just kind of intrinsically notice i think or subconsciously exactly notice. gotcha so let's talk about iteration really quick i'm gonna assume please correct me if i'm wrong but i'm gonna assume that you weren't just one and done it's like yay we, we made the protagonist and we're good to go did you have to go back to the drawing board and do it all over again multiple times oh my god so many times with everything like we particularly early on in the game when we're you know even when we decided the the cult theme and stuff we really were absolutely brutal with everything uh, particularly like the important stuff but even the stuff that isn't even that important just um particularly like me jay and julian just being brutal with each other about what we thought about it and whether it worked or if it sucked or if we think it could be better mm -hmm. and then you finally get to a place where you're like okay this is good and you get it in and it's good and then you're like okay i'm happy with this this is great how can we elevate it and make it even better and that's sort of something we've really tried to do throughout the whole process with everything in yeah. the game was was really um when you're happy with it and you think it's good enough how can you make it better yeah uh, really pushing yourself to, to do that it was a brutal process though did it ever make you think like we're incompetent and we're <laughs> we're we're yes. wait we're we are a wasteful team Always. I ask that from personal experience because I feel that way all the time, especially when I'm delegating to a team. Because I'm like, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to redo this, but you need to redo it. Yeah. And then I already apologized for it. And then two weeks later I say, sorry, bud, you're gonna have to redo it again. And so I feel incompetent, you know? Yeah, totally. I always feel, I always feel that, you know, imposter syndrome. And I think everyone does. Mm. I, but to be honest, I think it's um, it's something that keeps you humble. I think as, as soon as you think everything you do is hot shit then you're gonna stop trying so i think it's <laughs> i think it's important to, to, to keep that but yeah, yeah. it can be very frustrating and it can be I, th I think particularly at the beginning of the project where i was at a place where we just don't never give up uh, and it flopped didn't make any money i was very frustrated i was moving from flash to photoshop it's kind of it's about and just um 
felt like nothing was good enough, but I think you, you just have to kind of stick with it and really uh, find your motivation and dig deep and, and yeah, just, just keep banging your head about it. Sometimes move on to something different and then come back to it with fresh eyes. I have a very bad habit of kind of sitting and being like, okay, I'm, go I'm gonna get this character or animation or whatever it's done, done this evening and then it's sort of 2 a.m. and it's, it's still not good enough. <laughs> uh, I no, I'm not going to bed until it's done, but I think sometimes walking away yeah. and coming back to it with fresh eyes can be really yeah. valuable. Um, or just I feel the same way. throwing it away yeah. starting from scratch.